Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. As you can tell by the title, this is about the Lauren Daigle verdict. But the verdict that was rendered in court of public opinion by professing Christians. Now, if you watched any of my videos before, you probably know this is not going to go probably how you expected, which is how this was brought to me. I've seen a lot of things. People doing videos, writing different articles about how she handled the question regarding whether or not homosexuality is a sin. And also for criticizing her for fellowshipping with sinners. I never expected to do a video. Until yesterday I was out in the yard doing some work. And Lord revealed some things to me about how a lot of people are handling this. And some people have done some things out of presumption. It is dangerous. That just because you know a scripture that applies to a certain situation to assume that that is how the Lord is looking at things. 1 John 4 1 tells us, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. And I'll stop right there. Just because something has a scriptural reference doesn't mean it's communicating the heart and the mind of God. In Luke 4, verses 1 through um, 13, we saw the devil try tempting Jesus. And then he had the nerve to quote scripture, Psalm 91, about the Father giving his angels charge over him. It's like, wow. So just because something has a biblical reference doesn't mean it's coming from the heart and mind of God. Because that quoted scripture was coming from the devil. So just because you know someone is doing something and you can relate a, or tie a scripture to it doesn't mean that is what the Lord is saying about that particular situation. So even though this is speaking about Lauren Daigle, it is much bigger than her. So believe not every spirit because not every spirit is of God, even if there is a scripture associated with it. There are some videos that I've seen that are entitled about is Lauren Daigle an enemy of God? Some people have outright called her an enemy of God. Now let me state, state this. I am not here to defend Lauren Daigle. I only speak for the Lord. That is it. James 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Crystal clear, huh? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So we can look at um, the things Lauren Daigle has said, the things she has done, and say, oh, she's a friend of the world. That means she is the enemy of God. Have you ever sp spoken to the Lord about someone, someone who was clearly wrong? but the Lord chose to deal with you instead? You may have a spouse that did you wrong, you spoke to the Lord, but the Lord starts convicting you of the things that you're doing. And it doesn't mean that you can't speak out against others, speak out about, against their sins. But the Lord's going to check your heart. Because there are many things, people who are doing things in the name of the Lord, but that is not the heart and mind of God in that situation. Because some people are calling Lauren Daigle an enemy of God. And probably shock you if you're one of them to find out that she may be in better standing with the Lord than you. Let's go to Numbers 12. Where Aaron and Miriam had a charge against Moses. Numbers 12, starting verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they had issued issues with his interracial marriage. <laughs> I won't go there. But they had issues with his interracial marriage. 
And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now Moses was meek, but he wasn't perfect. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses, hmm, is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. So let's say that Aaron and Miriam had a legitimate complaint against Moses. The Lord spoke about Moses' faithfulness. With respect to Lauren Daigle, is she more faithful to the Lord than you? Has the Lord told you, to, for example, to write a book 10 years ago that you haven't written the first paragraph? Has he told you to like stop and give someone some money on your way to church, but you decide you're going to go and give that money to the pastor instead because, instead because he told you, will a man rob God? So you disobeyed the Lord. Is she more faithful than you? Because she may be in better standing with the Lord than you are. Going to the Lord because you have strong evidence to convict someone doesn't mean the Lord is going to side with you. And a great example of this is in John 8 verses 1 through 11. The Pharisees, they had caught a woman committing adultery and they took her to Jesus for judgment. It seems as if they had an airtight case. She was caught committing adultery. The penalty was death. But they made a mistake. In verse 6 of John 8, it says, This, they said, tempting him. So they went to the Lord with the woman, not necessarily because she had sinned, but because they're trying to ensnare the Lord. They're trying to tempt him. In Luke 4, 1 through 13, one of the things the Lord did to rebuke the devil was say, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, which is a violation of Deuteronomy 6, 16. So they, they came looking righteous, but they're trying to tempt God. In Matthew 23, the Lord rebuked the Pharisees and scribes for looking like whitewashed sepulchers or whitewashed tombs, saying that on the outside they look righteous, but inside they're full of dead men's bones. So with this, I'm just saying, before you point, the Lord is saying, before you point the finger at someone else, check yourself. Because you come to the Lord, He is going to check you. He is going to check you. And I'm not sure if you've ever experienced this, where someone did you wrong. That person was wrong no matter how you slice or dice it. But the Lord had you go apologize to that person. And that's if you're faithful enough to go obey him. Because if the Lord told you to go apologize to someone who did you wrong, but you're like, oh, that's not the Lord, or you know it's the Lord, and you're like, I'm not apologizing. Be careful about pointing fingers at someone else if you're not faithful to the Lord. Now, the way this ended, it didn't mean that the Lord agreed with her committing adultery. He didn't condone it, but he said he did not condemn her, but he told her to go and sin no more. That speaks of the heart of God. He forgave her, but he told her to go and sin no more. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I had prepared some notes, but there's something that I had forgotten. In John 4, 
Jesus had an encounter with a woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And he said to her that she had five, she had had five husbands, and the man she was with was not her husband. That was serious, especially in those times. The Lord brought those things up. He knew what she had done and what she was doing, but he wasn't condemning her. What happened that day is that she became an evangelist for the Lord. She went back to her village and she told the people about the Messiah. And think about how many people the Lord had done things before and they would not accept him as a Christ. But because of that one encounter, she, a sinful woman, recognized that he was a Christ and she went to her village and told the Lord about him or told the people about Jesus being the Christ. A lot of times we see people for who they were and who they are, but we don't see them for who they will be. And that's what the Lord sees. And that's one of the things that he will look when he's applying judgment. In um, John 4, or of course in John 7, and let me read it. John 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. There are a lot of things the Lord uses when he's applying judgment. Sometimes he has mercy. He extends grace. Peter denied Christ three times. But the Lord knew who Peter would become. The Lord had told Peter that Satan had requested to sift him as wheat. We don't always pass the test when we, when we were being sifted as wheat. We don't always pass. But the Lord's forgiven. He's merciful. Think about the times that he has forgiven you. Now, have I said some things about Lauren Daigle and what she did? Yes, I have. The way she handled it, it was wrong. Homosexuality is a sin. The Bible makes it clear. And one of my things about anyone being a Christian, go through the Bible for yourself at least once. Whether you read it or you have it play, played on an app where a narrator reads it to you, go through the Bible at least once for yourself so that you know right from wrong. There were times when um, religious people approached Jesus. And one of the things he would say is, have you not read? It was insulting in two ways. One, these were people who were keeping the law. And they spent time reading the law. So by saying, have you not read? It was an indictment against them by saying, you should know this. It is written. And saying it is written is a part of using the sword of spirit. So by him saying, have you not read, it means you should know this. In John 3, when Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to see Jesus, he was like, you're a teacher of the law and you don't know these things? The other thing about that is, when Jesus is saying, have you not read, the implied task is for us to read and to know for ourselves. In Philippians, Paul wrote about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You are without, without excuse. Being a Christian Especially here in the United States, if you have a phone or you have a Bible, but you're not studying it to show yourself approved. So this thing is a double-edged sword. And what I'm saying this, if someone asks you something about the Bible, about your faith, if you don't know, don't tell people to go and search out the matter and let you know. Again, study to show yourself approved. Be like the Bereans in Acts 17, where Paul preached, and they searched the scriptures to ensure it was so. Like I said, I'm not here for or against Lauren Daigle. I'm here for the Lord. I'm here for the Lord. And for your salvation. So again, don't make assumptions that because Lauren Daigle is or seems like a friend of the world, that she's necessarily at enmity with the Lord. The Lord knows the beginning from the end. He knows where she is and where she's going to be. Same thing with you. Because there is a great apostasy. Some can say it's starting, some can say it's already started. A great falling away. There are people who used to be strong in their faith, but they have fallen away. On the contrary, there are people who were against God and now their faith is firm. 
their faith in him is firm. So people change. And like the Lord said, those who endure until the end will be saved. So ensure that you're enduring to the end. Now with John 8, they came to the Lord accusing the woman. They were also hypocrites because they wanted to have her stoned in accordance with um, Leviticus 20 verse 10. But they only brought the woman to the Lord, but he didn't even go down that route, which is one of those things where the Lord will bring things up in a way that is unexpected, but is still in accordance with his word. So in Leviticus 20 verse 10, it states, And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. Shall be put to death. Where was the man? But the Lord didn't go down that route. Now when he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone, it doesn't mean he need to be sinless in order to cast the first stone. Let's look at Matthew 7. A lot of people, they know Matthew 7 verse 1, where it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. But it continues, For with, the, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So if you do not extend any mercy and grace towards the Lord, or correction towards um, Lauren Daigle, do not be surprised if the Lord does not extend mercy and grace to you. Now, the Lord continued by saying that remove the beam or the plank from your eye before you start speaking about the speck in another person's eye. It doesn't mean that if you see a person in sin, they shouldn't say anything. Because also, another part of this is some people have exhibited cowardice. They do not confront sins. A lot of people say, well, I'll just pray for her. Prayer is good, but sometimes you have to confront an issue. In Galatians 2, the Apostle Paul openly confronted Peter about his hypocrisy at the time. Paul wrote about like putting people out of the church so they would learn how to repent. Jesus spoke about if there's an issue with you and your brother, go to him privately. If the person doesn't repent, take two or three witnesses. If doesn't repent, then do it in front of the church. So there's precedence for that. It's not all about praying because some people pray because they do not want to say anything. They do not want to openly confront. And I actually said this to someone recently where the person mentioned about praying. When David committed an adultery, the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to rebuke him. The Bible also tells us that Open rebuke is better than secret love. Hmm. <sighs> so whatever you do, just because you have a scripture for it, ensure that it's how or what the Lord wants to apply under, that, under, under those circumstances. Because saying the word of God is always communicating the heart and mind of God in that situation. The devil knows scriptures too. He has used it, is using it, and will continue to use scriptures. I mentioned about um, David. The Bathsheba incident, it was a blot on his record. One of the things the Lord did was actually, he put away those sins. David and Bathsheba should have been put to death under Leviticus 2010. But the Lord forgave him. A part of the reason why the Lord forgave him was the Lord knew David's heart. David was still a man of the Lord's heart. After the Bathsheba incident, there's nowhere else where you see about David doing something like that again. David had repented. David had truly turned away. In 1 Kings 15, we see an example of how the Lord looked at David after the Bathsheba incident. Start in verse 1. Now, in the eighteenth year 
of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam of Judah, or over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother was named Makah, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. So the Lord was saying that David's heart was perfect before him. This was after the Bathsheba incident. And it says, Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him in all wow <laughs> I didn't see this before when the Lord gave me all these scriptural references but and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life save only the matter of Uriah the Hittite so David did not turn aside from anything that the Lord commanded him. David was faithful to the Lord. So again, if you're speaking about Lauren Daigle being an enemy of the Lord, and the Lord told you to, for example, write a book and you haven't started, you're not faithful in the Lord's house. If he gives give you some instructions that you haven't obeyed, you are not faithful. So because you're not a friend of the world, it doesn't mean that your standing with the Lord is better than, for example, Lauren Daigle's in this case. We all have room to grow. Sanctification is a process. I have done some things in my life, and I'm glad that the Lord forgave me. I could have been sent to hell. In Matthew, or correction, Luke 7. Thank you, Lord. In Luke 7. The Pharisees were looking down on a woman because she was sinful. And the Lord spoke to Peter and let him know that someone who has been forgiven of much loves much. Conversely, someone who's been forgiven of little loves little. And he had mercy on the woman. There are times when because we have fallen so far and the Lord has been so merciful to us, that we come back on fire for the Lord, a fire that will not burn out, because we remember where we were, what could have happened, and what the Lord did to give us a chance. We have to be careful that we do not condemn people when the Lord has not done so. There are people the Lord has condemned. They are walking on earth condemned right now. In Second Thessalonians, it speaks about those who love not the truth that the Lord will give them over to lie so that they will not even be able to accept the truth. Romans 1 speaks about those who are burning with lust, like with same-sex relationships, that the Lord will hand them over to their lust. They will become reprobate. Where even if you tell them the truth, they won't accept it because the Lord has hardened their heart. In the book of Exodus, the Lord sent Moses to the Pharaoh to tell him to let his people go. Three times Moses appeared before the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh hardened his heart. After that, it was the Lord who hardened Pharaoh's heart. So there are some people with a hardened heart and they will not repent. There were three times when the Lord told Jeremiah to not pray for the people because he was not going to listen to those prayers. So sometimes praying won't help. This is why it's important. Those who live by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And it's important to have the Holy Spirit lead you regarding how to handle things. Do not be led by your flesh. 
Because those who are led by the flesh, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. In Galatians 5, it speaks about those works of the flesh. So we have to be careful that we're being led by the Holy Spirit of God. That we're communicating things from the heart and mind of God. And not because there's a scripture for it. There are many people who call them Bible thumpers. They beat people over the head with scriptures. But it's not the word of God. Some people don't believe that the Lord speaks today. And they say if they want to hear the Lord speak, they just read a scripture. Well, just because you're in the word of God, again, it doesn't mean it's communicating exactly what the Lord has in mind for that particular situation. And I'll share with you, I think, one more scripture. This is from Exodus 33. Moses had an encounter with the Lord. And he, the Lord, said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. A lot of people may wonder, how could Jesus let the woman who had committed adultery go when she had clearly violated the law? What was his scriptural basis for doing that? Well, you could point to how the Lord had forgiven David of him committing adultery. In 2 Samuel 12, when you go to Exodus thirty-three nineteen, 19, that sets the precedence. The Lord will be gracious to whom he'll be gracious, and he'll have mercy upon whom he'll have mercy. There are two instances in the Bible where the Lord told someone to either go and sin no more, or go and sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. So the Lord is gracious, he is merciful. Again, there are some people who he has condemned already. They have been rejected. It's like King Saul. Two years into his reign, as you see in 1 Samuel 13, the Lord had rejected him. In 1 Samuel 16, after Samuel had told Saul that the Lord had rejected him as king and has torn the kingdom from him and has given it to someone better than him, Samuel was lamenting over Saul. And the Lord said, why are you lamenting over him? I have rejected him. And basically told him to gather his stuff and go anoint one of Jesse's son, sons as Saul's replacement. So the Lord knows how to move on. So ensure that the Spirit of God is leading you in what's for you doing. In what's for you doing. You may have a scripture for it, and the Lord may have another scripture for it, that is not something you would even consider. So again, like John 8, the woman caught committing adultery. Jesus didn't bother exploring that their case had loopholes. They were trying to tempt God, a violation of Deuteronomy 6.16. They didn't bring the man along with them, a violation of Leviticus 20.10. But in part because they're trying to tempt the Lord, they're trying to set him up. He made a way of escape for the woman. With a strong warning. Peter denied Christ, but was redeemed. Peter denied Christ three times. And three times the Lord asked Peter if he loved him. Peter was reinstated. Exodus 33, 19, the Lord said he'll be gracious to whom he'll be gracious, and he'll have mercy upon whom he will have mercy. Be careful about condemning someone whom the Lord has not condemned. In accordance with um, John 7, 24, do not judge by mere appearances, but judge righteous judgment. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of judgment. Let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. And sometimes he will not speak while there is a lot of mess. 
like this if someone sees it labeled Lauren Daigle maybe they may bypass this message thinking oh that's old news but well, sometimes the Lord will wait until basically the smoke clears and the dust settles before he speaks I pray this was informative in some cases if you're someone who's being condemned condemned by others but you don't feel as if Christ has condemned you just maybe he hasn't seek the Lord because sometimes his answers is very different from ours but his answers will always go back to his written word God bless you